over to our pastor, Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. Thank God for every person. I trust that you will receive the word this morning as it's coming forth to minister to you. Okay? Okay. We're in, we're in Psalms. I know we're in Psalms. Just a minute. Yes. This uh, thing that you got up here is way too high. The Bible's sliding off of it. He said, you a complaining pastor? No. <laughs> People get along with me very well. Yes. But I'm going to preach to you from the 42nd chapter of Psalms. Father, we're so grateful this morning for your blessings, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the privilege it is to come to your house to lift up your name, to worship you. I pray, God, for every person in this building that you would touch their lives, that you would minister to them. No matter what it is, God, you already know ahead of time. I pray now, God, for the anointing of God upon thy servant, for without you I can do nothing. With you I can do anything, and we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As the heart panteth, H-A-R-T, the deer. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul 
after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou cast down and disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I want to preach a little while to you this morning. The problem with a lot of people that can't serve God comes from one fact is that we don't have that longing for him. We're not hungry. The word says, if I hunger and thirst after righteousness, then I shall be filled. But if I don't hunger and thirst after God, you don't get, you don't get God. So what we, we have many desires that lead us over here and lead us there. We need to understand, if I'm going to move toward God, I got to go after him. You ever, you ever saw somebody uh, th that you met that you really felt like, I like this person, or I, I maybe sometimes feel like I'm in love with this person or whatever? If you don't go after them, you never get them. Now, I hope that's the other way around, that the man is coming after you and you're not after him. But for the most part, if we're going after, if we want something bad enough, we go after it. Whatever it takes, that's what I want to do. And so if that means sacrificing my life or whatever, I'll do that. But we don't have this hunger and desire for God. As a result of that, we keep going away from him. But if we long for him and crave for him, we will find ourselves feeling more of God than we ever felt in our life because what we crave, what we desire, we go after. So if, if I'm thirsty... I got to have something to drink. I don't think it should be Pepsi. I think it should be water. Uh, a lot of people, oh, you don't really satisfy thirst unless you have water. Sugar doesn't do it. Okay? So a craving for something to drink often is, is, uh, is associated with dehydration. So spiritually speaking, too many people are dehydrated spiritually. And so I have something missing in my life. I don't know what it is. I go here, I go there, but I never quite get it. And the bottom line is I'm, I'm thirsting for the wrong thing. I need something else in my life to make my life full and complete. And I cannot have that if I don't get thirsty for God. So when you dehydrate yourself in the natural, it's a significant loss of body fluid that impairs your normal uh, uh, body uh, function. So if you get dehydrated, you find all kind of problems. Your joints don't function right. One thing to another is a problem. And so have you ever been thirsty and you drink some water or something and you can feel it going down like this? That means you're dehydrated because those are all dry spots that's hitting in there. So spiritually speaking, the same thing applies. So where you find yourself is that, what's wrong with me? How many people have asked themselves that question, what's wrong with me? I'm over here doing this, I'm doing that, but what's wrong with me? Something's not quite right. We can't seem to put our finger on it. What is this? Why am I unhappy when everything around me says that I should be? Why am I sad? When everything around me says I shouldn't be sad. Except the things that surround us is not good. So we find ourselves feeling this feeling of sadness. I am grateful to God for being in my life, for helping me to come after him. Because if I didn't go after him, I couldn't make it. This morning I got up. And I was thinking about my daughter that just died about nine months, ten months ago. And I don't think of her every day, but almost every day. And so when I got up this morning, I remember w when I was doing my makeup and she was at home and, uh, getting ready for church and she'd be in the bathtub, we'd always talk until we finished what we were doing. 
And this morning, I just felt sad. I felt, gosh, I wish Juana was here. And I know she can't be. And I know God did a good thing. He didn't do something bad. But all of a sudden, I, I said to my daughter, I feel sad. Sad, why? Because something that was in my life is no longer there. And so when you have the relationship that Juana and I had, you, you wouldn't even understand it unless you could understand the relationship. And so I thought for a minute, this will pass, and it did. Because by the time I get here to see you, I'm feeling better. Because I'm going to say something today that's going to help you, that's going to make you feel better. Yes. And maybe, maybe you've experienced some kind of loss in your life. It may not be a daughter, it may be something else, but you, you feel that. That's why we got to have God. If I didn't have him in my life, I'd be sad every day. But because he's there, that's why I'm not sad every day. We laugh, we have fun, and what have you. And it just sometimes some of these things just come on you unexpected. But when I thought about my desire for God, I weighs everything else that ev I ever had in my life. And you will find out the same thing, that no matter what you've had in your life, nothing is like having God in your life. It fills every portion of you. You feel like, gosh, I can make it. You know how many people feel like I can't make it? Because something is missing inside. That the missing link is missing that helps you to make it. So you can't make it. So you keep trying to get past these things and over, the, over here and over there, trying to get past it. But it seems unpassable. It seems impossible. The song says, have you any mountain that you, can't, that you can't climb? If you have something that you're going through in your life that's difficult, hard to take, but with God you can take anything. That's why sometimes the, the trouble that comes in our life crushes us. It crushes you so bad that you don't function well all simply because I can't handle this by myself. And you cannot. We're not built to handle a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of trouble. Even though the scripture says man that is born of a, wo of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. We know that life is going to bring many, many troubles. But if you got God to stand with you and help you to get through it, that's what's going to make the difference. But you got to ask yourself, what do I desire? Is it God that I desire? No, not really. Is it him that I'm looking for? Not really. And then people will tell you, well, that's, that's not what I need. That's not what I'm looking for. You'll be surprised the thing that you push at the back of the line, that's the person that you need. When you push it behind you. So man's cravings and desires is what's taking him either toward God or away from God. So you got to ask yourself, do I really think about God and want more of God in my life? Am I really there? you got to ask yourself that. And then be honest that I've tried everything else in my life, and none of those things seem to fill it. So now, by now, I'm trying to think what's missing. And we go on an exploration, so to speak. Try exploring, trying to find what I need. Sometimes you think it's a new job. Sometimes you think it's a new boyfriend. Sometimes you think I need a new marriage or whatever the case may be. But understand this. What, by the time you go through that whole list, you find out that's not it. And so I need somebody in my life. You need God in your life. If you got him, you can overcome anything. If you got him, you can make it through the darkest hours, the most troublesome time. Yes. Don't, don't get your mind completely on something else or somebody more than on God. David said, my heart panteth after God. As a heart, as a deer, after it's going to run really, really fast, and it gets extremely thirsty. And, and so he, he pants as he drinks the water. The thirst is being satisfied. God wants to do the same thing for you. Satisfy your thirst. Satisfy that feeling inside that you don't call, I need God. There's something in there that's not right. Why do we have so many young people taking their lives, a lot of them? They take their lives, committing suicide, saying, 
life's not worth living. It's because they don't know God. If you know God, you understand without a doubt, life is worth living. But it's only worth living with God. Yes. So ask yourself, what are you craving? What's your desire? How deep does it go? And if the craving ain't for God, it'll never satisfy you. You, you know, it's almost like if you're craving something to eat and somebody wants to give you something different and you say, no, 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 I don't want that. But I'm longing and craving for something. What is it? No, I don't want that. I don't want no chicken today. So, so what do you want? I don't know, but I want something. And sometimes you're hungry, but you cannot decide what I want to eat. Because inside, I don't know what I need. Something, I need something. I say I'm hungry, but we're not hungry for God. We got a hunger for God. That God, when I, I've had it many times in my life where I said, God, I want something, but I don't know what it is. You go look in the, you, 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 uh, I mean, you look in the cabinet in the kitchen, it's not there. You open the refrigerator and stand there and look at everything and think, no, none of that do I want. And the thing that's happening inside of you is that longing for something that you have never went to, something you've never really uh, t touched on, and that's God. Because I didn't feel like that was the one. I didn't feel like that was the thing. But it is. I found that out very young in my life. When I was very young and was in Germany with my husband and, gosh, I was lonely. You know what? You can have a world of people around you and be lonely. You can have people around you who say they love you, but you are lonely. Why are you lonely? My husband used to say to me, what's wrong? He'd come home and I'd... Sometimes I'd be crying. He said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm crying about. But I'm in a foreign country. I don't speak the language. I don't drive. And I don't know if any of those things would have made one bit of difference. Because what was happening inside of me was deep inside. And, and, and he said, honey, what's wrong? He said, I'm here for you. Uh, the kids are here. We all love you. I know. I know. Why are you crying? I don't know why I'm crying. But for some reason, I feel sad inside. Even though I had a good husband who loved me, children who loved me, everything around me was good, except being in a foreign country. So I'm trying to figure out why am I unhappy? You may want to ask yourself that question this morning. Why am I unhappy? It's not because your girlfriend left you. It's not because your boyfriend said, I'm, I'm tired of you, I'm out of here. It's none of those things. But you think for the moment that that's got to be it. Because I was doing okay as long as he was here or she was here. They can't fill every place in your life. No person is capable of it. And so oftentimes what happens in marriage is we are reaching out to our husband or our wife, uh, trying to get them to satisfy this longing. And, and he says, I don't know what you want, baby. I don't know what you want. What can I give you? And the truth is, he can give you nothing that's going to fill that place. It's impossible. So we look to people to somehow make us feel happy, make, take away this sad feeling, take away this. You can be happily married and totally sad. That's the truth. Because unless we put God in our life, we are miserable. We are unhappy people. <laughs> See, when the craving becomes Craving is a powerful force. It'll make you get up in the middle of the night and go get you a donut. I'm, it'll make you do crazy stuff. I just had to have it. When I woke up, I thought, God, I got to have that. Craving is powerful, and it continues to push you. But if, if the craving is taking you places you shouldn't go and to people you shouldn't go to, I just, I'm just longing for you. And then you get the person on the phone and say, how you doing, John? I'm fine, baby. What is it? Well, I, I just feel sad. Well, baby, there ain't nothing I can do for you. I'm sad half the time, too, so what do you want me to do? Everybody got their own problem. It's like you calling me about being sad. I got some sad moments over here. Who going to help me not to be sad? So we want to lean on somebody, our boyfriend, our girlfriend, or our husband, or our wife, and say, well, that'll make me feel better. No, it doesn't. Because until you wake up to the realization your craving need to be about God and then everything else that you 
got in your life that, that you think that's going to make you happy will just fall in place. It just fall in place. I've seen more girls heartbroken over some boy who said he loved them and I, I really care about you. You're what I've been looking for all, these, all this time. You're just perfect. You're not perfect. You never will be. So there's always something on us that's not necessarily perfect. So don't, don't believe that lie when they tell you, you you're the perfect person I've been looking for. No. After a while, when they get tired of you and get long, and, and want, want a break time, I think what we do, we get into relationships expecting this Prince Charming, Cinderella. That's, honey, that's not real. That's fantasy. Ain't no Cinderella going on. That's in the, that's in the, in the book look, that you read, but you're not going to be Cinderella. You're not going to be, your Prince Charming is not who you think he is. That Prince Charming will turn into a lion. Something crazy. You said, what's wrong? What happened? I thought you said you loved me. Well, I did, baby, but hey, everybody have some time that you don't feel like maybe you don't love you. And then you say, what, what can I do? What, what did I go wrong? I just tell women, if your husband has an affair on you with another woman, I don't care how that woman looks. That has nothing to do why he left you. You say, well, maybe I had a, if I had lost some weight, maybe if I'd have done this, maybe if I'd have done that. That's not it. You got a fool on your hands. That's what you got. Honey, he, he, he would appreciate you. Because when he's going out here looking for somebody, forget you. And sometimes they get somebody, you think, he left me for that? That's what happened to Sister Daisy's uh, uh, late husband. Joker, Daisy was as pretty as a picture. Tall, slim. <laughs> I'm trying to hide her face. Tall, slim, nice size. Well, her husband eventually put a bullet in his own head. Well, he did her so bad, it may have been justice for him. He did her horrible. But we went back to the funeral to take her 12-year-old son because that was his dad. And this Humpty Dumpty Ookie Yaki come walking down the aisle. I said, is that what he left you for? She looked like Granny Sue. I thought you looked horrible. She was walking horrible and her shoes was all bent out on the side. And, and here she comes. She looked so old and matronly. And so I was sitting by days at the funeral and they said, she started crying. I said, don't cry. I said, don't let that see you crying over that. She said, I shouldn't be crying. I said, no. Sit here straight in your face. You're the winner. He's not. Where is he at? In a casket with a bullet to his head. And this ugly duckling he walked out and left her for. That's what I'm trying to understand. What made you leave home and go get ugly ookie? How is that? Got a beautiful wife, somebody who loves you, somebody who's faithful to you, who's trying to do everything she can to be the wife you wanted to be. How did you go pick that? We had a lady come here in the church some years ago, and me and played her all the time. She, she felt like she was playing them, but she wasn't. And she was a bit overweight, and she came... Um, in the church, and Daisy said to her, honey, don't let the men play you. She said, they're not playing me, baby. I'm playing them. And I'm thinking, nobody wins at the game. If you play him and he plays you, nobody wins at the game. The only place you're going to win is when you wrap yourself up in God because you can't lose with him. You cannot lose with him. I got to find out What's driving me in the wrong direction? It's my desire for this, my desire for that. I, want, I desire this, and I crave. Craving is a lot, goes a lot deeper because it just won't let up until you do something to satisfy it. 
that's the way it is with a whole society is bent on sex everywhere everywhere you can't have a commercial without sex everything is sex everything I've never seen nothing like it and they crave that so they go after it again and again until they get used up and there's nothing left and nobody wants you and they're talking about it sometimes you want to be like somebody you don't even know who that person is just just on the surface I think you know I'd like to be like you No, be you that's what God made you yes so when you find yourself going after God it's going to make you happy not temporarily but a continuous joy inside of you in your heart every day and even when you're going through difficult times way down in here you say are you okay yes in spite of it I had a moment this morning but that moment is no longer present the only person that can take that away is God try to understand it's not going to go away just because you wanted to. But when you get somebody, when you get in love with him, fall in love with God. We give our lives to so many things and so many people. Give it to God. If you give your heart to God, he's going to love you. He's going to be good to you. He'll never hurt you. He'll never disappoint you. You can count on him to be there no matter what. Yes. David said, my soul it's consumed with longing for your rules at all times. I long for your law to do it right. I long for the word of God that gives me what I should be doing. I long for that. How many people don't long for the word? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. You need to hear it. It is life. In this book are the issues of life. So everything you're ever going to need is right in here. You've got to have a long for the word. I need to hear some preaching. I need to hear some teaching. I need to hear something different. You need it. You need it. See? He said, keeping God's law should be something we long for if you have been uh, bored. If you have this feeling that I'm not worth anything, and watch people that make you feel like you're not worth something. Watch those kind of people. They would just beat you down and make you feel little and make you feel like you don't have any worth and you don't really count and, and I don't, who would want you and I don't know why I wanted you. Don't, let, don't accept that. How many people have been torn down and made to be unhappy just because somebody told them you're not worth anything? You better believe in yourself. You better believe in God. That God is going to make the difference in my life. And that's the God said true. It's important. So when I looked at this, uh, I, I listened when David said, I opened my mouth and pat and patted because I long for your commandments. Even for everything, whatever you command, I long for that. You got to long for the things that pertain to God. And then all this other stuff, it'll happen. It'll happen. My soul longs. Yes, it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God I long to go to his house how many people don't want to go to church David said I long to be in your courts in your house I find when you go to church when you're down sometime you go to church you feel a whole lot better you think boy I feel better when I hear the songs and when I hear people worshiping and praising God oh I feel so much better it's amazing even if you can't sing, hum you something. You may not have a pretty voice, but who says you got to have a pretty voice? When you start singing, it makes a difference. It makes, if anybody is unhappy, let him sing. Let him be merry. You can't be merry without God. The world is too full of pain, suffering, and all this stuff. You look out here, you see trouble and more trouble and more trouble. You think, oh, my God. We had two bounty hunters come to church a couple of weeks ago. And they had their they had their guns um, in their holster on their on, on their on their belt on, on their waist, and he wanted to know what was the church's rules about having the gun. And my son-in-law said, "Well, we can't let you sit in church with your gun like that. 
you know the violence and the gun sh the shooting of guns all over this country and you see anybody sitting in church with a with a gun when they go to churches and and shoot up people in church you can't wear that in church so my son-in-law said well i tell you what why don't i put them in the office and lock them up until after church i said okay okay that'll work you, if people see a gun they ain't going to hear nothing else. I'm getting out of here. You know, they shot up somebody else's church. I don't know what I should be here now. Did you see that man with that gun? People are frightened. They are afraid. Am I going to be a victim of the next shooting? So, no, don't do that. We want you to stay. But your guns is another story. We've got to put that back there. And they, t and they didn't get offended. They, they said, I, I respect what the church's rules are. Didn't have a problem with it at all. So, when, it, when you look at your life, you got to think, that's everywhere. People, I, I mean, this is an open state here, you op open carry. So you can just walk anywhere with a gun as long as you got a permit, and you can just wear it out in the open. You never know when somebody's just going to go stone crazy all of a sudden and start shooting just because you got a gun and you, and you, and you, uh, and you're licensed to carry don't mean you're not dangerous. doesn't mean that. So you got to stop for a minute and say, what protection do I have? The scripture says the angels of the Lord encamp around about those that fear him. So if you're, lo if you're loving God and giving your life to him, he said angels around you. Angels protect you. So when other people are being hurt and destroyed, your life is protected because you love God. He's, he's number one in your life. That's who you're going after. Yes. So... When I look at this, I'm thinking, if you can get people to come to God, it will change their life forever. I thought about Pookie yesterday when he said, oh, this man was all carried away over cars. He said, man, this ain't about cars. It's about God. We got, we got cravings and loving for some I just want this kind of car I want this kind of house I want this this thing I want that get God first seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these other things they'll be added to you all the things that you're putting before God don't put it before him put it behind you and put God in the front and the things that you want that you think are important if they're good for you God will give them to you you don't have to go after that first so we come up, we come up short in many, in many ways. David said to my soul, why are you just quiet, David? Why are you upset? But then he thought about God. You don't have to be upset. It's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Isn't that a good feeling when you're in the midst of, of, a, of a difficult time and somebody says, it's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. You'll make it through this. You'll, God's put there with you. He's going to help you. But he needs a commitment from you. He needs you to say, I'm going to give my life to him. That's the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. I guarantee it. The best decision. You will never regret it. I made that decision 53 years ago. And let me tell you, to this day, I am so glad I did. I'm so glad. Because the things I had to face... Oh, my God. Only God could help me go through some of the things in my life. You lose your husband after 34 years. I was very young when I married him. That was all I knew. To suddenly lose him, talking one minute and dead the next. You better have God. You better have God. And I say to him every day, Thank you for being in my life, for getting me through the difficult time. Thanks for making me happy. Thanks for giving me joy. Thanks for giving me peace of mind. You got to have peace of mind. You know, people trying to find that. That's, I just want peace of mind. You can't have it if you don't have God. He is the Prince of Peace. He's the one that makes you have peace and settle in him. Long, long time, four years later, Another daughter dies at 29 years old. But who? I preached all of them at funeral. How do you do that? God helps you. When the, when the funeral director said, 
Rose, you better take a seat at the head of the casket, because usually when I preach people's funeral, I sit at the head as the family and, the, and other people come to, to view the body, I stand at the head of the casket. He said to me, uh, Rose, I think we're gonna get you a chair so you can sit at the head of your husband's casket. I said, no, no, God's helping me. I couldn't make it. A chair is not gonna change it. I'm not gonna faint. I'm not gonna pass out. I'm gonna stand in his strength and I'm gonna make it through this. After 34 years of being with this person, my 29 year old daughter died he didn't, he didn't say that again. The same funeral director had, had her too. No, God's going to get us through it. You're going to face trouble in your life sooner or later. You're going to be in a situation that you can't change it and you can't fix it. No matter how you want to, you can't change it. You got to stop and think, okay, so, so, so when your day comes, when your time of trouble comes, when your darkest hour comes, when it seems like there's no way out, you better have God. Otherwise, you can't get through it. It's, it's overwhelming. It's like, what's going on? I told my kids when Charles died, I said, I felt like a, a tornado came in my life all of a sudden and just ripped it apart. Except God was there with me. He will be there with you in your time of trouble. But you got to go after him. See, I'm not going to stop until I get him. I'm going after him. I'm going to get to know him. I want to know what he's all about, his love. Everything that he is, I want to know. Go after it. You can have it. It's a good life. Well, by the time my, my daughter died 10 months ago, I've been through it, but I've been strengthened by every situation. Sometimes we don't like trouble because we look at trouble as it's just tearing me up. But if, if you make it through it, you become stronger. You become stronger. And God is there with you helping you to get through it. There's no feeling like that. Every difficult time I ever went through in my life strengthened me for the next one because God does that. So all these things that you think that you want and need in your life, you're going to realize that wasn't what I needed. But don't wake up too late. Don't wait until you're so old you can't get around. And we all going to get old no matter how. how if you live long enough, you're going to get old. But what can I do? I want to be able to keep moving. I think I'm moving today because God's helping me. Because let me tell you, old age can be difficult. It can be difficult. You find yourself, Lord, thank you to let me get up this morning. Thank I can move my legs and my feet. Let me always be able to walk, talk, hear, and see. And he does that. Society don't treat our seniors very nice. But you keep living. Your time will come. And if you didn't treat people nice, you're not going to be treated nice. I make it a point to love on these seniors because I love them to death. You know why? Because I'm a senior. So I think, wow, I want to help them. I want, I want them to know they're loved, they're cared about. Take a moment. Don't pass over and say, yeah, he's old. Keep living. You're not going to get younger if you keep living. You're going to get older. Then what? So I, I, I think about my grandmother who raised me and she was almost 80 years old when she died and I used to look at her and think, God, why can't she just do this? Why can't she just do that? Stupid. Time takes its toll on you. At best, it takes its toll. But what David is saying that God is there with me to help me to go through these times as well because I'm moving. In him, I move and have my being. In him, I move and have my being. Without him, I couldn't move. You couldn't move either. You don't have to be old not to move. There's young people paralyzed and can't move. Young people in a bad situation, a bad health condition. With young people, you don't have to be old for it to happen. But no matter what, God's there with you. David said he remembered me in my old age. He was there for me, helping me to get through, helping me to see that I could get past this and not wake up depressed. I laugh, I laugh at the, the things that happen when you get old. But that's what everything y'all do, just laugh. Don't get upset about it. 
I laugh with my kids. That's about being old, but hey, I laugh at them because they can't move good. And I'm thinking, come on. Mama, you had your kids when you was too young. Now we're all getting old together. And yeah, probably got a point. <laughs> yeah. Because I almost get happy when I see them can't do something. It's like, oh. So it ain't just me. It's them too. So, hey, I'm going to be happy about it. And I said, wow, I'm glad I lived long enough to see y'all like that. I'm so glad. But you know what? If you can't laugh at it, if you can't just look at it and say it's okay, and if you can't look in that mirror and say it's all right, because our society is not good for old, not even in the workplace. In corporate, they don't want old people. They want young people. So as you get older, you constantly push back and push back. Hey, don't let nobody take away your worth whether I work at your job or not. We got more knowledge with age than you have. A lot of knowledge. Young people, I look at them and think I'm glad I'm not young anymore because they do some of the dumbest stuff all the time. Just, it's, it's, it's called youth. That's why David said, Lord, please forgive me for the sins of my youth because I was stupid. I didn't have enough knowledge. When you get old, that's, a, that's the advantage. Of course, you got some old fools that they never, they never learn nothing. But for the most part, you learn a lot. Over a period of time, those of us that's been here a while, we can tell you some things. We can show you, well, you shouldn't do that. That's not going to work for you. Well, how does she know? Experience teaches us. Life experiences. You just got here. You're just starting out. I used to think my grandmother was just full of crap. She's, she's, from, she's old fashioned. She don't know what's going on, I said. Telling me stay away from boys. Why? Why I gotta got stay away from boys? What's wrong with them? Stay away from them. Nah. Ain't a thing wrong with that, I said. It didn't take me very long to find out something was wrong with that. Yes. You're young, inexperienced, don't know about life. She's telling me things that's really beneficial, but I don't like it. She's old-fashioned. Nah. So you can't have a boyfriend, Grandma? No. You can't have a boyfriend. I said, well, how you know what you're going to marry or how you know who you want to marry? How you find out who they are? I'll tell you they're all full of hell. You don't want none of them. <laughs> and you know what I thought? Well, you had one. I dare not say it. But I thought to myself, you had, you had a husband and ten kids. Something wasn't bad about that. <laughs> so they ain't all bad. I think something is wrong here. It's a bit confusing to me. I thought, no. I want to be able to experience life, I said, with my stupid self. I want to experience life. She don't understand. I left home when I was 16 years old. I thought, I'm getting ready to live a bit. No, I got ready. I, I found out I went into the worst nightmare of my life. Crazy. Running into people wondering, why that happened? Why is this? Why is that? That's what she was trying to tell me. So listen to the elders. Listen to the seniors. We've been here a while. We can tell you some things. We can tell you that God is the answer. I want you to create a longing for God. Start praying. You may not can pray very long, but pray. Say something to God. If nothing else, Lord, could you help me? I don't know what I'm doing. How do I get here? How do I get there? I don't know. He'll show you. He will direct you. He said, I'll order your steps if you ask me. If you acknowledge me, I'll direct your steps. I'll tell you what's good and what's not. And you got to be willing to listen to that. I'm listening to it. Whatever he tells me to do, that's what I'm going to do. We don't like that. We, people want to hurry up and grow up and become grown and say, I'm grown now. I can do whatever I want. Craving is an expression of neediness. I need this. I need this. 
I don't buy that stuff because she's pregnant. You want pickles and ice cream? I never want no pickles and ice cream. I don't even buy that. I thought, why has that become a, a, that's a myth. I just wanted good food. I wasn't concerned about a pickle, like, like people don't mix pickles and ice cream unless you're pregnant. That's a myth. It's not even true. See, a desire is an exp expression of longing. Craving is an expression of neediness. So I feel like I need this. If you crave something, you're more likely to get it. You know, I've been craving that. How many of us have been on a fast in this church? And you on the fast said, wow, I was craving ice cream. I was craving just a nice steak. I was craving this, craving that. I remember when I was on a 30-day fast one time, and I had this dream, and as far as you could see was a table. <laughs> that table was spread out, a long table loaded with every kind of food on the planet. And I was going down the line eating all that food. I was so hungry, because you get hungry on the fast, don't get it wrong. And I'm thinking, I'm eating all this stuff on this table. And I wake up and think, hey, it was a dream. You thought it was food. You thought you was enjoying yourself. It's a dream. And you think, God, as soon as this fast is over, I got to get some of that food. I got to get that. Oh, the dream, that was so good. Get away from it. Because if you keep craving it and keep craving it, you'll break your fast and end it long before it's supposed to be. I'd have never made 30 days if I just said, I got to have this. Oh, some kind of way, I got to have it. And you can see the steak in your mind. And it's nice and brown and juicy. And you're just going through <laughs> And you find yourself, when you're fasting, if you ain't careful, licking your mouth. <laughs> That's a, craving is horrible. If you've got a craving for something, nothing else will satisfy it. Say you've got a craving for a candy bar, well, a piece of something over here, whatever it may be. That's not it. I need the candy. And you know sugar? Sugar is a killer. You start craving nothing but sugar, sugar, more sugar, more sugar, more sugar. And you never get enough. That's why your thirst is not really quenched when you drink a, a pop that's sweet with sugar. Your, your real thirst didn't get satisfied. Only water does that. We don't want that many cold pop. <laughs> when I looked at that, I just thought, oh, wow, that's what I needed. No, it wasn't. You say you're thirsty. Not for a pop. For water. Water is healthy for us. It helps us. But if you allow yourself to become Constantly going after something. There was a girl I met in Germany. I'll never forget it. She was a, uh, what do they call her? I'm trying to think of the name of it. Can't think right now. But she never could get enough sex, ever, ever, whatever that is. And so when I, when I met her, she said, Sister Rose, she said, if a man touch her like this, just just a touch, she would lose him. One time she had sex on a, on a bench right out in public because she couldn't control it. She craved sex. It's like a fiend continually craving it. Never, never getting enough, ever. Everything we do in life has an end. Cravings just keep you going and going and going and going. And you think, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I keep going after the thing. I said, I'm not going to do this, and I'm doing it again. What's wrong with me? You need God to take that all the way. You can get the right craving, not that. How many young girls and men have said, I'm going to keep myself until I get married. I'm not going to have sex before then. We don't have that much anymore. But how many people have said, I gave in. They feel bad about it to a point. I said, well, no, I don't feel that bad after all. Uh, I had a great time. You know, I wish I'd have waited. But it's okay. I'm not going to be hard on myself. Get hard on yourself. Because you're going to go back again and again. And then boys start talking about you. They belittle you. They say she's not worth nothing. Anybody can have her. 
You don't want people saying that. You want to be a lady. We don't have many ladies left anymore. But you can be different. I told my daughters that I said, don't feel bad because you're a virgin. My daughter said, I don't want people to know I'm a virgin. I said, why not? People look down on you if you, if you are not. I say, tell them when they come up to you and say, have you had sex? No, I haven't. Well, what's wrong with you? I said, no, what's wrong with you? I'm okay. I'm in control. You're not. Just push it right back in their face. Don't let them make you feel bad because you, you decided to wait. In our society, no. A lady stood up on one of the shows on TV and said, um, I'm 35, 40 years old, and I've never had sex with you. Everybody in the audience went around. Well, who is she? Like, what's wrong? I mean, they're making faces. Like, what's wrong with her? They try to make you feel bad about being, doing the thing that's right. Don't let anybody make you feel like if you don't do it their way, it's the wrong way. That's not true. <laughs> not true. Think about it. I've got to cause my life to become filled with good things with God. I don't, I don't need all this. A, a craving oftentimes comes very sudden, very sudden. And all of a sudden, you find yourself right here. When you feel it, that's why, that's why when you got God, you can back up from it. You can back up from it. But if you ain't got him, you can't. It's an appetite. That's what my appetite calls for. All bad things, all wrong things. Do, they ever, do your appetite crave something good? Think about it. I told my son-in-law, my, um, my uh, well, he was my son-in-law. He still is. I can't get rid of him. He was married to my daughter that passed away, but he would eat chicken every single day. Fried chicken, not baked, not raw, fried every day. I kept saying, P, you better quit eating so much fried chicken, that stuff's not healthy for you. I know, Mom. Every time you see me come in with a bag of, of fried chicken. He went to the dentist one day and sat down in the chair to get his teeth taken care of, and they, and they took his blood pressure, and it was dangerously high. And they said, well, we can't work on your teeth right now. You got to get that down. And he come out and told me, they told me they can't fix my teeth. I said, what happened? Blood pressure. I said, that's that fried chicken. Just keep going after it, keep going after it. You got to say, you know, a piece of chicken every now and then. Oh, no. He was going to have him a chicken, chickens. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. It become uncontrollable. He had to have it. He craved it. He craved it. What are you craving in your life that's not good for you? What's going on with you that you say, Sister Rose, Boy, I'd be ashamed to tell you what I crave. Ask the Lord to tell you. You don't have to tell me. This morning, come for prayer and say, Lord, take away the wrong cravings, the wrong desires. Give me a desire to want that which is good. Let me fall in love with God. Get to know who he is. Because whatever in your life that's not God is is bound to eventually come to your destruction. Because we as a people, we're born in sin. So everything we crave has something to do with sin. Our desires is about sin. The scripture said, man drinketh, uh, huh? He drinks, he drinks it iniquity like water. He loves doing wrong. God changes us and come into our heart and we do it right. So ask yourself that. What are you craving this morning? What are, what are you doing that continually takes you away from God rather than to God? What is it? you got to ask yourself that. I'm messed up. You know if you messed up. And you don't have to tell me how messed up you are. You just say, well, would you pray for me? And God will change it. Look up to him in secret, in your heart. God, you know the things that I'm doing wrong and the times I go back again and again and again and again. Forgive me, come into my heart. Make me love you more than I love anybody. Because if you love him more than you love anybody, you'll never be in trouble. You'll never do wrong things. <laughs> we try to fill our life with substitutes. They don't work. There's never a substitute for God. 
Everything that you need in your life, only God can fill it. Take it for a moment. Say, you know what? I'm going to change that. You can change it. He helped me. Because I don't know. There was a time in my life I craved uh, sweet potato pie and fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, stuffed pork chop, cornbread. <laughs> I don't eat that crap no more. At some point in my life I had to say, are you kidding? I, and, and maybe white people don't know what chitlins are. You ever heard of chitlins? I ate them things one time. Now, they snake up your house. They smell just like poop. Because that's where the animal's uh, bowels is in, that, in, in, the, in the intestine. You put them on and cook it. Your whole house smells like poop. Good eating. Have that with some coleslaw, some greens, some cornbread. I loved it. One day after I was 30-something years old, I fixed a big pot of chitlins with, with uh, hog maws in it. That's black folks talk. And, and you know what? I went stone blind. When I got through this, what's going on? <laughs> any, inner, any inner organ in an animal is loaded with cholesterol. I didn't know that. I learned that. But I never had them again. I thought, I'm not going to eat anything that makes me go blind. Um, take, take your sight. <laughs> it ain't worth that. Okay. But then you change your life. And I, I said this to my daughters. Your body craves what you put in it. If it's good, it craves good. If it's bad, it craves bad. So I told my daughter this week, I like salmon. And Daisy fixes, fixes salmon the best. And when I had salmon and a salad, salmon and a salad, Salmon and a salad. Some fruit on the side. Happy as a lark. I seen the time you'd have told me that. I thought, are you kidding me? Not anymore. If you want to be able to breathe and move and get around, you better let that stuff go. They call it soul food. It'll kill you. It will kill you. We know that. That stuff is bad for you. A lot of people have it, but it's bad for you. I'm glad I changed that because as I got older, I realized a lot of this stuff was giving me problems. I don't want to die because of what I put in my body or what I didn't, what I didn't do that I should have done. I don't do it at all. And you know what? There's no problem. My body craves good things, fruit, fish, red meat sometimes, but not fat. It's amazing. Your body don't even want it. It don't even ask for it. It's okay. They said the other day, and said, Mama, are you, you going to eat something? I said, no, this, I'm full. Years ago, you had a dinner plate. Fill it up. Don't have a holiday, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Fill it up. Wait a little while. Fill it up again. And then come to church and can't breathe. Tried to put a girl on to pull it in. That's still, you no, know, you're not going to make it. <sighs> Sweating. <laughs> I mean, sweating hot. Wrestling in that girl. They come to church out of preach. God, God is good. <laughs> come on. It ain't even worth it. It ain't even worth it. But you got, you got to learn that. I never heard fat grams and calories in our household for the whole time I was being grown. What is a calorie? What is fat? You don't know nothing about that stuff. We just ate what was there. You had to learn that. So I say to you this morning, whatever you're craving, be it wrong food, ask God to take it away. He'll take it away. If you're craving other things that you know is wrong, but you're doing it anyway, come on, let God change that. Let me pray for you. Say, Lord, if you could give Sister Rose strength and you could change her, you can change me. And he can. He can. Stand to your feet. Come on, musicians.
You know what that stuff does to you? It turns you into a slave. You're out of control. You can't even handle it. I got to go to it. It's calling me, calling my name. I don't want to do that. You sitting there this morning and say, Sister Rose, I love everybody. I understand we all have issues and we can get out of it if you really want to. You don't have to remain where you're at. Nobody wants to be a slave. Nobody. A slave that I have no control. I can't say no. I can't say yes. I am messed up. Ask him for power. He's the one that empowers you to be able to do what you need to do. I'm here this morning just to tell you that he can. And if you want me to pray for you, I will. There is peace at the foot of the cross. There is peace at the foot of the cross. Oh, you just lay down your Joy at the 